Once again, could we have a new named storm system in the Philippine Sea as we go ahead through the 23rd into the 24th? It's currently the morning right now of the 20th of November, 2025. I'm meteorologist Robert Spett. I always do my best to inform, educate, and not hype up these areas. So let's be real and talk about what's happening here with a risk of an LPA just off the east coast of Visayas. And this is the ECMWF in the latest run as we go ahead through the 23rd into the 24th. So only about four to five days out. This is the GFS also indicating something there and the icon and even the Google DeepMind. That is the AI model, which has been very good at kind of placement of a the low pressure centers not so much intensity but it has been very good at in the development of tropical systems recently one thing i do want to point out if we go over to the satellite imagery it's there's nothing there at this time outside of a couple areas of convection now where the models are grabbing at is this big burst of convection way south of guam and southeast of palau now uh, to be fair this is very similar spot a little bit further south from where uwan formed up here but but still, you know, it's just south of Guam and the general consensus pulls it towards the north and west. It has to get away from the equator and kind of escape the lack of Coriolis to start to get a little bit of a spin on it. But I think the bigger thing is if we look at the satellite picture here, you have the subtropical ridge right in there, which is going to keep this on a westward track. But then you also have the northeast monsoon and a very solid and apparent shear line. That's why northern areas of Luzon are looking at some heavy rainfall out there today. Now, I point this all out and let's like digest the satellite picture here. Because I think what's going to happen in the end is we could see a low pressure area, maybe a tropical depression out of this. A typhoon seems unlikely, but you can't take it off the table. But I think the bigger thing is we'll likely see a solid interaction with the northeast monsoon creating some pretty decent rainfall across parts of Visayas and southeastern Luzon. And, and let's talk about this here. we will taking a little bit of a closer look at our Metro Weather Weatherscapes graphics. This is via the ECMWF guidance. And you can see what I'm talking about here. So here's our high pressure ridge way towards the north. The subtropical right in there. Smack in the middle is the shear line. And now keep an eye south of Guam. You kind of see that broad rotation trying to spin up right in there. Now as this moves towards the north and west, what's going to happen is it's going to interact with that northeast monsoon. And here comes right there you see it there's your low pressure center and you see that interaction it's going to create a tighter pressure and gradient induced winds north of that center of circulation in fact even the more powerful model output the gfs which has been kind of you know going for a tropical depression at least a tropical storm also indicates that because if you see this you get the higher winds in the northern periphery of a bit but what a lot of those like clickbait facebook youtube people that don't have any idea what they're talking about they won't show you the moisture and this is what i'm going to show you right here so this is the rainfall and thunderstorms you look at the northern periphery of this look at how it's a lot heavier versus towards the south now one it is the right front quadrant and that is very common and typical but two it's likely due to the interaction of the northeast monsoon which you know can increase some pretty decent rainfall for eastern areas of Visayas and southeastern luzon but also it decreases the in the likelihood of this developing into a stronger like super typhoon type deal because there would be just too much shear associated with it and you can even see that here um taking a look i wonder why my iso bars aren't moving i'm gonna get that off the screen so you can see that here basically that broad low level center on the ecmwf right here and then you see the winds coming in just like that now this would indicate a broad wind field towards the north but also some pretty decent rainfall for parts of the beat call region over towards late day and samar definitely an increase in showers and you even see that here there's your shear line back towards the north also parts of vietnam there's been some casualties because of significant flooding taking place all part of the northeast monsoon so you throw an lpa in the mix and even at the low pressure center tracks there right over Shargao uh, or southern areas of late day the heaviest of the rain would likely be in the right front quadrant right there where these two kind of forks in the road come together the northeast monsoon and the easterlies around this area of low pressure and that seems more and more like the higher likelihood of something happening here today now it's not to say we could like a typhoon is not off the table but given you know the lack of tropical organization at this time we go back to that satellite picture there's not much out there right now and given also the fact that it's so far south and the fact that the northeast monsoon is so strong this interaction i think is going to make this maybe a low pressure it could be called tropical depression for bonner or whatever the next one is um but 
I think uh, or Coda uh, from the uh, the international field. But I think the bigger intera- the, the bigger problem would be that interaction between the Northeast Monsoon and the Easterlies. And that's how you know when I talk about like these dynamic type setups. If you check in somebody that thinks they know what they're talking about and is trying to say like a super typhoon is coming or something like that and they don't mention these interactions and these caveats here um or just even mention like give you a good look at the satellite picture right now and say oh that's it they're going to show you an ai slop that's going to click unfortunately this image right here is not going to get clicks um on it in fact i should probably title that on this thumbnail this will not get clicks because it won't it, it won't because it's not this big kind of super storm, but that's the early development of probably a low pressure area or tropical depression. The last thing we need though, I get it once again, is another area developing off of the east coast of the Philippines, uh, still recovering from back-to-back storms, and even a tropical depression still can be very problematic in this area. So that's the last thing we need right now, and I can't stress enough to just continue to check back in for more updates, although this is only like four to five days out, so this could actually sneak up on you pretty quickly. So make sure you just... (sighs) I think we've been through enough storms. You've heard... Everybody say till they're blue in the face, make sure you kind of make those little preparations, things like putting your valuables in a bag or something. Just be ready for flooding. But in, in an instance like this, especially if this does end up being a relatively weaker storm, um, it, it can it can surprise people. And I think that's what happened with Tino. That was even a, that was a typhoon, but it wasn't a super typhoon. So it still surprised a lot of people. And I worry more about a tropical storm in this area of the philippines this time of year right after back to back you know strong typhoons a super typhoon uh a tino or i mean uwan excuse me i worry more about a tropical storm following that that i worry about a super typhoon at the beginning of the year and now you hear me out and you're probably going what is he talking about it's a psychological thing we're near the end of the season We've been through plenty of storms. A lot of people are just like, I've been through it. I just went through a super typhoon. Why should I care? Each storm has a different impact. Each storm can catch people off guards. And a lot of times this time of year with these straight runners and they interact with the northeast monsoon, they can be big rainmakers. So remember Washi back in 2011? <laughs> big rainmaker in Mindanao. And over a 1,000 people died from that one. So let's just keep that in mind as we look ahead anyways you just seen our patreon members there a big shout out to all of our patreon members and if you're new to this channel please hit that subscribe button if you've been around the channel for a while and it just pops up in your algorithm can you do me a solid favor and hit the subscribe button that way you get notified and we can get more people informed on what's happening out here in the tropics as always i'm meteorologist Robert Spetta, and number one thing is of course stay safe out there friends bye